Green is the new gold. Our 18-hole Niklaus design, award-winning golf course and clubhouse will leave you green with envy. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City way. Welcome to yet another episode of Real Talk with me, Anel M. Dada on SABC3, where the stage is yours. My guest today is a shy individual who opts to stay away from the media glare. She comes from humble beginnings rooted in Jababu Soweto, where growing up was not always easy. Raised by her grandmother and mother, she went on to fight through her struggles to achieve the success she has today. She is an in-demand actress, an entrepreneur, a wife and a mother. Please help me in welcoming the enigmatic, beautiful, and stylish Ente Mbali Mapumulo. The way I practiced that surname, because I was like, Mapumulo. I don't want to mess with your cows, eh? <laughs> no, you did it. You did a great job. I don't want to so mess much. with your cows. I'm like, and that introduction. Right? Yes. Oh, in demand and oh, trials. Oh, gosh. But you've been acting, though. Yes, just, I've been doing it. You've been doing I've it. Been and doing I remember it. you posted something on Instagram long ago, mm. and the caption was, where you had the pictures of you acting. You're like, 10 years, stop it. 12 years now. Yeah, yeah, when stop I get it. it. So 12 years, <laughs> stop it. Yes. And, and I liked it because I was like, yes, she is her person. She, I'm my own person. Yeah, she's I her own person. I just became a unity when... You know, my other partner when, came by. When that guy came along, <laughs> when and then the man. now you just you get me package. You're like, yeah, them. Oh, who? Them. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah. But somebody described you so well. They mm -hmm. said, she's South Africa's Victoria Beckham. Oh. And then, and you know, I never thought about it. But then when you're sitting, you're like, hmm. Calculate. You're like, yeah. stylish chick, Victoria Beckham. She loses more weight the more she has children. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, Check, you know, married to a very famous guy, but also successful in her own right. Mm. Check, and I was like, by Jove, chap. She is. I don't know if I should be flattered or angazi, but. Own fashion I, line? Own fashion. Hello, actually. Check. Call me Antlen Bali Beckham. Beckham. <laughs> you need a Beckingham Palace. <laughs> stop it, stop it. <laughs> right, thank mm. you so much for joining us. No, I want to talk about. Uh, growing up in Soweto mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. your grandmother mm -hmm. and your mother, mm -hmm. um, who do, who's, who's the authoritative one? Because mm -hmm. when, when it's your grandmother and your mother in the same yeah, space, yeah, who, yeah. whose word is real? You know, a lot of the time, it's actually my great-grandmother. Oh, I, wow. I got to meet and be raised by my great-grandmother, uh -huh. but it was lovely. And I, w I spent most of my time with her because my mother was always what? working. Yeah. You know, she was about... 26 when I was three oh. so she was quite a, a young mother and she had to get things going for me yeah. it was a home full of love I was poor but I had no idea and that's how the warmth of that household was it was a lovely place what I like what you said once was it was difficult to get a hundred rand out of my mother so she was uh, like 20 <laughs> <laughs> she was like you want to make money here yeah, go into pageants pageants will make yes, you so that's yeah. how you got into pageants because you were looking for like an extra bug for yourself I was like what job can I do that I don't have to sit in front of a desk I don't have to be a receptionist mm -hmm. and she was into pageantry as as a young woman herself so she was like Lalela I think you could. And I thought at that time, Ganjani. Yeah. Because, you know, my mother's not one person that told me I was beautiful. Wait. She, she did that purposefully. I found out three years ago that she was like, mm -mm, I, I didn't want, want you to you believe to in something a else. Head. Yes. But wait, your name is Entlembali, which means beautiful flower. I didn't know. As if, <laughs> and you, you, know, you know somebody's pretty when it's Entlembali because a flower is already beautiful. I don't know any ugly flowers, do you? I didn't know. So it's like, basically, know. basically your family called you pretty pretty. <laughs> there you go. There you <laughs> beautiful, go. beautiful. But I was so oblivious of it, and I thank her for that because mm. I could have been that that girl who just only has her looks to has rely looks. on, right? Exactly. And who was the father figure for you? I had no father figure. My mother was my mother and my father and my confidant mm. and everything into one package. And I, and I, I quite like that because she had a warmth and a sternness <gasps> to her that I learned. I learned to be strong 
but keep my femininity at the same time. Oh, so I don't oh. compete with men. I'm like, okay. You just like, I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Woman is strong and that's what I am. I want to know about Umbali Westup. Umbali Westup. <laughs> Sarafina. <laughs> okay, so I was quite the performer. Uh. Uh, won't come to big guys in the neighborhood. If it was Umbali, they knew, okay, she's at that house. You want to perform her, she's at that house. But I would gather everyone and tell them, sit. It wasn't a question. Uh -huh. It wasn't a matter, do you want to or what, do you have an appointment? No, sit, watch. Mm. And if I wasn't Sarafina, I was Bumshaka, I was so many people, and I would just perform my heart out. Yeah, so you, the arts pretty much caught up with you at a very early very, stage. Very, That bug bit me a long time ago. And if, if, cause then when I, when I was heard about Umbali Westup who would do Sarafina. Umbali Westup. I know, cause <laughs> a, a, a stoop is like your, your porch. Yeah. You know, so, and it's, so it's it's a stage actually it's a stage, it's, it's a stage outside exactly the house what it and is. that's what we used to do as yeah, well when we we're yeah, growing up yeah. when i heard about that and then i was like okay she likes serafina we all like serafina because mm -hmm. you know how we are in about 10 years time there's going to be a remake of serafina and i'm going to be her i will be serafina look at the camera <laughs> flash smile at the camera yes stop don't do it was actually yeah, life. just life. the other day and we dude were we all her. not obsessed with Leliti Kumalo though? Her grace though, <gasps> right? After everything she's been mm, through, all you see is mm, just grace. She and oozes beauty. It. Beauty. Like, I'm beauty. just like, where the pimples at? Like, Something, yeah, show no, a little bit of stress. Such a human. <laughs> show a little bit of stress. So you would None be willing to go None into that? I would do it. I, they wouldn't need to ask me twice. Mm -hmm. I would negotiate my salary after shooting 20 <laughs> scenes. I want to be there. And you're like, actually, how much am I getting paid? How much am I getting paid? <laughs> I getting paid? Yeah, yeah. So your mom's a makeup artist mm -hmm, by profession. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. which means she was always on a magazine shoot, on a movie shoot, mm -hmm. on a TV set. Mm -hmm. Did you ever follow her to any of those? And, and, and then did it solidify like yes. Mbali's part? Yes, completely. You know, uh, when my mother couldn't get anyone to look after me, uh -huh. I was there with her. And so I, I would sit back and I realized, wait a minute this could actually be a career. People are doing this for a living. Mm. And I always wanted to be a doctor, and by doctor, I mean psychologist. But then I thought, okay, my acting and my psychology at some point could come together because yeah. I could learn the human psyche to perform. Anyway, cutting a story short, I would watch, I remember watching Ukandi, mm. who was on Channel O. Miss Candy. Miss Candy. Oh, yeah. And I thought, yeah, I can do this. All right. I can Jam Alley, the set of Jam Alley. I was on the set of Jam Alley constantly. Um, and I grew up on sets and I loved it. And I enjoyed watching people enjoy their careers. Uh, so you are basically, I know, like, so what Blue Ivy saw because Blue Ivy's growing up on the road. <laughs> with Please don't stop. <laughs> From Beckham to Blue Ivy, call me Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've since discovered that Antlin Bali came here for compliments and it's fine because we have plenty That's for me. her. You have just about enough time to get yourself a cup of something hot, but don't be late to come back. The conversation continues with Antlin Bali, who is also steaming hot Mrs. Blackhoff, in case you weren't sure. Hallelujah. Hello and welcome back to Real Talk. If you've just joined us, we're spending time with the lovely Entlen Bali Mapumulo, who was just 17 years old when she made her acting debut on mtuzini.com on ACBS1. Since then, Mbali has portrayed a multitude of characters in several productions, including Rockville, Inkaba, and most recently, Broken Vows. And we're just talking about Broken Vows. You say it's nice there, hey? I love it. I love it. So far, so good. You're playing an estate agent. No. What is it? I'm playing a wedding planner. A we sorry, wedding planner. Be wedding planner. Who's, who's and dating a white guy. Once again, hey, I keep bumping into these white man characters. So clearly you <laughs> didn't get enough abuse uh, last year when you were on Seven Land mm -hmm. and you were in an interracial relationship. And You know, I'm so lucky that right now the people that are watching are more open-minded. True. And I'm not going to get any slander and just... I was torn apart on Seven Land, eh? But you know what? I don't... Yes, I mind, mm. but I, in a way, I'm like, I don't mind. I don't mind if people are going to tweet. I mean, we put ourselves out there. Mm. So the things mm. we get tweeted, you're like, mm. yeah, sharp, mm. you know, you choose the mm. ones you answer. Mm. You know, 
when it comes to fans or fans mm. of a show that do things mm. like that, I don't mind. I'm like, mm. go ahead. You feel close to it. It's your pro it's your product there. But when, but it's, your when peers, it's inside when it's your peers, the production, it's that's when I'm like, it's really painful. You know, being told that someone had said, "Ooh, Bad Mod is going to lose viewership now that he's kissed a black girl." I thought, is black a disease? Um, oh. And I don't think people understand what being black is. A simple statement like that shoots really deep. And for me, it shot so deep. It was really, really painful. And yeah. that's why I took on to social platform. I mean, I'm sure you've noticed, I'm not one to... Yeah, that's why I say, like, yes, you pick your battles very yes, carefully, and I yes, love you for that. Yes, and so I just thought, no, 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 no. This has to go on social media. My voice has to be heard in this instance. And with the production trying mm. to... I don't know how you can fix somebody's character flow, though. Um, I don't think you can, especially if they don't own up to it. Mm. So you kind of almost think, you know what, karma mm. will deal with this one. And I think it will, and I think it has. It has. A little. And the thing is, karma knows your address, eh? <laughs> you don't need to fill in any form for karma. It happens. Karma's it like, happens. don't worry, I'll get you. I'll yeah. get you. Yeah. So is that part of the reason you left, or were you always just um, going to be there and then in and then out? I was in and out. Yeah. Uh, I remember my agent saying something about elongating a contract, and I had said, no, I'm shooting Rockville. Oh. And, and because Rockville is home to me, you know? It Rockville, is. The Fergusons are Abu Shona and Oz Konya family to me. So it, it, was, it was quite something, that oh, it's, situation. It, it's, it's, it, well, it's lovely to watch that you have th that older mentorship inside mm. the industry mm. that's unwavering, mm. you know, full of support and mm. grows you as an actress mm. and they'll always, like, mm. you know, be a space for you in their mm. productions. Mm. Uh, 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 like, who's more your mentor there? Is it Siskoni or Abu Shona? You know, I think both. I can sit down with Abu Shona and he will give me the best personal advice. Uh. And then I will sit down with Oz Corny and she has the best business and personal advice. So I can't even differentiate between the two because they one in a kind, man. They're such he, special human beings. I know. I I've actually watched you. you with them at a <sighs> dinner and, and it, it's like... Is you like their daughter in a way? They're so special. They are so special. They're special human beings. And I think it's, it's very rare to find artists who are like them. People who are willing to, to, to help you grow. Because people older than you often compete with you as well. And that confuses you. And you think, okay, cool. I am trying to get from you. But yes. you are not giving. And they're very free with their knowledge. Yes. Oh, open. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so... Let's go back to Tunzini.com, right? Which was, and when you speak about it, you got like, it was, oh, it was a small role, it was a small role. It was a tiny little role. But I mean, it still kind of puts mm. you su mm. in such a, it, on the right lane, you know, to then go further. I will always appreciate Tunzini.com yeah. because it opened up the door to my lead. See, now what happened is I had gotten the role in Tunzini.com and the producer liked what I did so much that she had said, listen, we're shooting a series next year. Chisa. I would like you to come read for it. And I went through for Chisa and Bob's your uncle. I got it. But the funny story with him to Nzini.com, how I got that. I remember being 17, broke. I used to sell a keep keep and stuff at school and I just really? thought, no, there's got to be more to life. That's the entrepreneurial side. That's why it comes through so easily. Because <laughs> yes. no one is going to wake up and sell popcorn no. at school. No, after cool. school, be Babe, packing up, cool. you know, <laughs> snacks. And I just thought, no, there's got to be more to life than this. If I want to take this seriously, they've been giving us career guidance, but this is what I want to do. Uh. And I've been told you can't turn into a career, but I'm going to prove them wrong. Mother says, um, there's an audition for this and this and this. Now we shoot, she's shooting at Nick Balton. I remember mm. she dropped me off from Nick Balton and I decided I am walking. I walked over to their offices from Buclew to Rosebank. I auditioned and I got it on the spot. And I thought, God is good all the time, all the time. God, God is, is good. Yes. <laughs> so I really appreciated Ntunzini.com because it led me to finding Stephanie and it led me to finding Chisa and it led me to mm. finding Rhythm City and so forth and so forth and so forth. Uh, Chisa, you were precious. I was precious. Pre I still get called precious. I know. Precious. I'm like, mm. other way around. Uh, everyone, <laughs> listen, I think you were, every mother wanted you to be their son's oh, boyfriend man. and every boyfriend wanted you to be their girlfriend. <laughs> And, it, and then it, Rockville happened. <laughs> then Rockville happened. We're like, we don't know. Who is she? But Rockville was when 
I, I'd never really watched you properly. Mm -hmm. I watched you properly at Rockville, mm -hmm. and that's when I realized you actually such a good actress. Thank you. And and then I heard you say that acting is my crutch. Acting is my psychology. Acting is don't tell my husband my first love. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I fell in love with acting uh, way before I found him. And acting took, ooh, the psychology of it is insane because when I was younger, I think it was about 13, there was a point my mother was going through a divorce. I had an angry mother. I had a family that was just dismantled. I, I was alone. And the only thing I had that I could say this is mine was acting. It saved me. I'm not gonna go deep into it, uh -huh. but it saved me. But have you ever dealt with rejection then? Because yes. in yes. acting. Yes. So which yes. roles have you never, cause it sounds to me like you went, you got, you went, you got, like, like which one didn't you get? Um, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, think about it. Um, I don't know, Anneli. This is insane. Well, think about it. Then after Chisa, Rhythm City happened. Mm, mm. And then after Rhythm City, then Rockville came. Mm. And then after Rockville, Broken Vows came. Mm. And then throughout that, you yes, you were, you were hosting something on ANN7, mm, mm. Showbiz Live. And then Channel O. And then Channel O. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I I'll, think I'm blessed. I'm going to say God is blessing me because of the decisions I make in life. Okay. I haven't had the easiest of lives, mm -hmm. but I think God was like, okay, this poor child is trying, give the girl a bell. Okay. And that's what this is, I guess. Or it could just be that I work extremely hard to get to what I want and failure for me is never an option. Oh, also, oh, you, in the timing, you, when you know something's not for you, you're just not gonna go for it. And I learned from my mother, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so outside of Korea then, mm -hmm. have you ever had to deal with rejection outside of Korea? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. And you know how to deal with it? Oh, it's rejection is the most painful thing because it hits you far beyond your gut. Ne? And it's de-gutting and it's dehumanizing, but it has to happen for you to learn. Okay, and oh, uh, I see what you're saying now, because like you say, um, when you say your mother was going through a divorce at 13, that wasn't your dad? wasn't my father. So it was another man. It was another man. So, so do, you, do you personalize that? It's like, okay, so my dad left. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And then... No, no, no. Oh, no. so you don't take it I'm as if like these men girl. that didn't stick around to be your father no, no, is, is no. something upon you. Um, I don't think I ever wanted a man to replace my father. Mm. I think the little stolen moments my father gave me of parentship, if there's mm. such a thing, yeah. I, I appreciate it. To this day, I love Tropica because of my father. My father would come to a, a Lundusani white seat and, be, and call me and say, listen, don't tell anyone I was, anyone was here, but here's knickknacks and, you know, a Tropica. And memories like that for me have stuck. And I understood then, okay, they probably don't want him to see me for whatever reason it is, but I appreciate that he made an effort over and over and over and over again to come and see his daughter. We'll leave it there. Yeah. After the break, we'll talk about the night that had many a young lady's heart skipping a beat when Bali celebrated her white wedding at a lavish do at the City of the Sun. Stay with us. <laughs> And welcome back. So earlier in 2017, our Twitter timelines and Instagram accounts exploded with fairy tale like images of the Dame Bali and Black Coffee Wed in Sun City. Entle had a swooning in her majestic Khardian Kutia bridal gown as she said her I do's. And even more special than that was that her mom walked her down the aisle oh, in her suit. Mm. And boy, did we cry. I was like, don't mess my makeup. Let's not do this. Let's not cry. Let's not cry. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm going to backtrack before we go back and land up on that day. Mm, mm. You met him on the set of Chisa. I met him on the set of Chisa. I remember I was still dating someone. Mm. Uh, yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know what happened there? You short circuited. You're like, don't do it. Don't do it. You're just like, don't even go then, Bali. We're still dating someone. Uh, he was on the set. And I remember it was. Platonic, nothing yeah. there. We sat and we had a conversation. And I could see there was a, huh, huh, okay. Yeah, smart, well done, good job. And but you said you heard that he was a DJ. You were like, oh. I thought he was an actor. And they were like, no, this guy, 
This one, he's a real DJ. And I thought, okay, short circuit, but thank you, girl. Gone. And I remember he had inboxed me asking to go out for coffee. And I thought, mm -mm, not going to happen. <laughs> you, see, you, you, you see the funny bit there, the fact that Black Coffee asked you to go for coffee. Okay. No, um, I, I hate doing <laughs> that, but I always <laughs> land up in the same place. Like, I'm, just, I'm, here for, I'm here for fun. Carry on. No. <laughs> and finally, because he was persistent, I decided, okay, cool. Let's do this. I'm free on Sunday. And he said, I'm gigging. So I said, okay, then sorry, can't. He said, no, come through, I'll pick you up. I thought, okay, cool, flip, okay, that was easy. And Sunday he came through and he was like, listen, I'm going to take you through to my gigs. I understand you're busy and, you know, this was the only day you had and I didn't want to miss it, so do you mind? And I was there, so I said, let's do it. Mm. So we went gigging and um, I think that night we had stopped at Woolies. I know. Because all the, the restaurants were now closed. Meals. Yes. <laughs> All the woolies were now closed. Now this was like my standard is no. A man must never treat you. No, 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 no. I'm breaking all my rules. All my rules broken. Uh, we go to Woolies, go to his place, microwave meals. And that's the so and that's delicious. the date. Conversation on fleek, loved it. I think I left l early morning and I thought I shouldn't even be doing the, you know, walk of shame. Because yeah. there was no shame. I did nothing. But it was amazing. And from that day on, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe. But you guys were engaged pretty quickly. I think it was two, three months. Three months, and he, he asked you three to be his wife. And he popped the question. You know, we had never been apart from that day. I think we saw each other, <laughs> I don't know how many times a day, because I was, I was on the Soul, um, the Soul City set. Yes. But he would ask me, when, when's your call time? We'd see each other in the morning before I leave and then in the afternoon. So he made so much time to make sure he sees me. I just thought, okay, I like this. Okay. I like this attention. I like the fact that there's effort. Although our first date was just terrible. Our second date was amazing. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it worked out. But, and that's never changed though. He, he could be anywhere yeah. in the world. and We're Skyping. You guys are Skyping. We do the most stupid things. He'll be on Skype while I'm ironing. Just as long as he feels like he's in the room, it's cool with us. So we'll talk, 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 forget we're even talking to each other, do our thing. And then, oh gosh, hey, babe, by the way, Uboinile, ah! So we're friends. I like that about us. We can be stupid together. Okay. We can be serious together. It's, it's a synergy of everything and it works. So you had the, the Lobola and the traditional ceremony, mm -hmm. which was seven years ago, right? Why now? Why, why did you want to do the white wedding? I wanted a home. I've always wanted a home. And that's my little thing yeah. that, that I, I needed to deal with. And he's also someone that's always wanted a home. And he, he said you two are very similar. He said he's like... We are the same person. Sa we are the it's same crazy. person. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. And we had that in common. So we thought, listen, we really don't need a white wedding because it's just going to be a celebration. We're going to spend our money. True. And we won't have a home to go to that doesn't have a past. Mm. And so throughout those years, we bought properties, sold properties, bought land, sold land. Mm. And I remember we were staying, we were staying where we were staying. You don't give away <laughs> that. You, you, and you bought the house across the road. We bought the house across the road. I remember walking in. It's, it was an old, ugly, shabby, literally. All our neighbors just thought they bought that house. Yeah. I walked in, I walked into the yard and I said, yep, this is home. Called Nati, said, listen. Uh, I've spoken to this person, we've spoken to them, we're starting the process, finish off, whatever the case is. And Bob's your uncle. We started building and now we have a home and then we could have the wedding because we had the marriage going. Oh, it's just the wedding. Okay. When you felt that the money that you, you're having spent on the wedding is not taking away from your dream of having a home, then you could have a wedding. My dream was more important than the wedding. Because he was the one you. pushing the white wedding more than you were. <laughs> yes. But it was beautiful. It was lovely. It was lovely. I, I enjoyed it. We had so much fun. It didn't feel like a wedding. It was warm. Everyone that was there just understood it's not about anything else but yeah. getting crunk. We don't drink, but we got crunk of everyone's energy. Oh. So it was lovely. Oh, it was lovely. And when you woke up that morning, were you feeling like a like a queen and majestic, was it like, or, or were you just like, it's normal? I had my hair in cornrows. I had, my girls and I all slept in one room. We had a slumber party night before, and my sister, 
woke up and everyone's like, aren't you nervous? And I kept saying, guys, I'm do married. you realize we have been married for seven years? Yeah. The only thing that's happening right now is a party and I'm going to be in a white dress. Like every girl wants to be, we want to be that Cinderella for one day. Mm. I was not nervous. Everyone around me was panicking though. And they thought I was crazy for not panicking. For being calm. But I have a calm about me that's just so cool. I know. I just, I, you I like can't. a duck. On top, you like nothing. But um, like, even if you're pedaling underneath, you just on top. You're just like, no, I'm no. calm about. Mm. And how was he? Was he panicking? Was no, he... no, he was the same. He was just like, babe, sweaty. Let's let's have fun. Aww. And oh boy, did we have fun. And 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 what's your relationship like with his other kids? Because I saw that mm. his older Esso. son um, did a dance for you with Mr. his dad. Mr. Cool. I know. You know, your husband said he gets all his cool points from him. He's like, he teaches me how to dress. Teaches, he, he looks at us and he'd be like, nah, nah, not going to work. Mom, no. And I'm like, okay. So what's that like? Are just, you... um, it's, it's very hard being a mother to a teenager when I've only been a mother to toddlers. Yeah. So I'm having to skip so many steps to be a teen mom. So he gets away with a lot because I'm like, okay, am I being too nice? Am I not being too nice? Am I being too stern? Am I not being too stern? Okay. Um, he's not mine, so I almost have to treat him a certain way so he doesn't feel unloved. So there's a lot that happens in my psyche that I think a lot of state mothers go through as well. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a and lot. outside of Natty, who's your, your wall? Who's your go-to person? You're going to say your mom, aren't you? No, with me, it's it's an array of people for different reasons. Okay, give me uh, a few. My mother, because she's honest, brutal, she snaps me back immediately. Okay. Uh, my girl, Ubu Usi, who's like a spiritual leader for me. Um, my girl, Utami, who's just the girl I go to when I want to forget about anything, reality. Um, Tiamo, when I want like a business side. So it, it's an array of people. That's Lopang. Should I say all of them? <laughs> no, it's fine. You know no, I'm are. glad you don't have just one. Per I think mm. that's why you calm then, mm. because mm. you can offload on so many mm. people mm. that you never feel like a burden is your own. No, no, no. But I've also learned within myself, I can be very honest with myself. I can sit down, introspect, and say, okay, this is A, B. There is no gray. Uh. It's, it's, it's black or white. Don't go into the gray area. What is it? So I'm very honest with myself. Sometimes brutally, sometimes I'm too hard on myself, uh -huh. but it needs to be done. Do you have siblings? I have. <laughs> no, not like. I do, I do. I know I do. your dad had other kids. I, yes, I met yes, one on yes, South Africa. Have siblings. Beautiful Didi Malo. Didi yeah. Malo, there yes, we go. Yes, yes. Yes, I met her, but I mean, did your mom have other children? I have a younger brother. Yes. And I have. 10 brothers and sisters. I know. 11. <laughs> what are we now? Yeah, it's a number, a big one. <laughs> All I know is your dad must be very good looking. He be was a handsome because, guy. Like, every child from him is, is like, Watch out. <laughs> he's gorgeous. This Watch is the out. thing. When they're like, Papa was a rolling stone. I'm like, well, he must have looked like Will Smith. I look at my siblings and I think, guys, Listen here. And it's so funny because when Didi walked into South Africa, I was like, wow, she looks like Entle. But because you guys have got the nose. Your dad has. We give it away. We, yes, wherever he nose. is, he's. My sitting. daddy knows. <laughs> <laughs> he's such an idiot. Listen, <laughs> don't go anywhere. We're exploring Bali's effortless style and love for fashion after the break. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk. Fashion has come a long way since the days when pregnant women were hidden under huge tents, masquerading as dresses. Mm. These days, it's all about accentuating the pregnant body. In June 2015, Bali gave birth, figuratively, to her maternity range, simply Entle Pregos. And 2017 sees her baby entering its terrible twos in style with a brand new collection. Mm -hmm. So I like the fact that you launched this in New York, right? You were wearing it in New York and people in New York were asking you, girl, where that from? And you know that's fashion everything. If you want fashion, it's in New York. You're right. So I, I was quite shocked to see how much people were gravitating towards me. But a lot of the time, people would ask me if I'm English as well. Because if, if I would say, no, this is a brand called Essie Pregles. This is, are you from London? No, Africa. Yeah. So, so I loved teaching people that Africans are stylish, uh -huh. are everything America and Europe is. Okay, so 
We'll get to that later because the cause of that is this, mm. your two children. Mm. Mm. You said the first baby was a breeze, the second one, yo. And Which is so strange to me because <sighs> for your first uh, pregnancy, your husband wasn't at the birth. He was in a club underground in London. And I told him. <laughs> I said, I can feel it. This baby is coming early. Did you tell him? I told him. <laughs> what did he say? He was like, no, the doctor says this is the date. Don't listen to the doctor guy. This guy is talking. Listen to <laughs> me. Yeah, I am the one. But yes, he wasn't there, but he didn't choose not to be there. I know. In he his said, defense. I mean, he says he was gigging, he was in London, yeah. and then he had to go back yeah. to Paris. And, just and I, I'm also just a little too independent. I I yes. need to now and then uktefa. So I'm learning to do that. But um, he was in London, I think. Yeah. And I remember my contraction started slowly. And I called my mom because I thought my water had broke. Thought. It's your first one, so everything's confusing. I call yeah. her, Lalela, I think my contractions have begun. And I think I broke my water. And my mother says, you don't think it's happening. Pack a bag. I didn't pack a bag because I was confused. I was trying to count my contractions. I think she got there in five minutes. I don't know how fast my mother drove that day, but she got there in the speed of light. Yeah. And when she got there, the doctors were like, you, you're dealing with your pain a little too well because they're looking at the little machine. They can see that the contraction are a bit too much. But here's Mbali giggling with every contraction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it was the funniest birth ever. But when he did get there, it was beautiful. Uh, mm. And when, yeah, and there we go, when he did get there, did you feel like there'd been misconceptions about motherhood? There were lies, there were, there were just things that you were taught or read that you mm. didn't found, mm. find materialized in motherhood. If I could backtrack, I think I would have given natural birth. Um, yes, yes, crazy, right? But uh, in South Africa, you're almost given a choice. I think my doctor looked at me and said, mm, you're too small, you can't give birth. Mm. But when I'd gone to the States, that woman was like, there is no such thing. You can give birth. Oh, because the second one you had in New York. I had in New York, yes. yes. And um, I, I would have given natural birth. The, the hospital I went to, they ha there's no natural birth happens there. They call it Caesar's Palace because, you know, it's like a cesarean. Oh, no. That's what they call the hospital Caesar's Palace because everyone there is just like... So what? you also had a C-section? Yes, I had a C-section. Yeah, I would have given natural birth if, if I was made to understand uh -huh. it properly. Because the second time around, I went through all stages. I, I contracted until I was seven... I'm oversharing, but hey. Come until forward. I was seven centimeters dilated. But unfortunately, I had to go into an emergency C-section because, yeah... Complications. Yeah, complications, small complications. But because I'd had a C-section, any uh -huh. complication is a complication. What has motherhood taught you about yourself? That I am patient. Oh. I, I, I never thought... I never knew I was this patient until Anesu uh -huh. and until Asante. Um, I, I need to, I used to go from zero to two, 200. Okay. Now it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can go through all stages before I get to 100. So they've taught me that I'm patient and I didn't know that I had the well of love that I do. I haven't felt love like I feel now and I, mm. I don't feel empty. It's, it's a nice feeling. And... You, people would think that when you have two kids, it's more chaotic. But for you, I understand oh, it's the other way around. It, no, 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 no. no. It's more chaotic. It's chaotic. I think I just deal with chaos differently because okay. I, what is it? What do we need to do? Fix, fix, fix. The first thing that pops up to mind, and I thank my mother for this, is what is the solution? So if I see a problem, I've already calculated how I'm going to solve the problem. All and right. that's just how I think. That's just how I'm wired. So it's crazy. But when I get that crazy together, it's like, wow. So what, what's, like, what's, the, what, what's the traveling like? Because mm. y'all are everywhere, okay? You, you are spending summers here and summers here, and then you're in L.A., then I'm you are in New York. I've oh. skipped winter for three years, and now <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> is this what it feels like? <laughs> but, but, um, Wait, stop. You can't, you can't carry on after saying that. We need to take, we all need to take a moment and realize what you just said. <laughs> I've skipped winter for three years. <laughs> How is your warm <laughs> bottle and your electric blanket feeling about now to you? <laughs> you are such an idiot, I love it. Okay, and then tell us. But, but yeah, um, summer gets boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another stop. 
summer gets boring when you in Stop Ibiza. Stop it, Anel. When you in Ibiza it. and your man is the headline for yeah. three months, it just gets boring being on a yacht no, all the no. time. You man. know, I'm not that girl. I, I think know you've you noticed not. Unati is also not the that party guy. guy. Yeah. So for me, the party gets a little empty. It's like, okay, we're going to have the same conversation. Hi, how are you? You, I don't like that. I like oh. meaningful things. So to be honest with you, without my girls, it gets so lonely. It I gets can so, so, so lonely. So I find myself planning the year ahead. I'm over planning now because I can only shoot in Jan mm -hmm. and March and then in April I leave. And then when I come back, so it's also improved my planning skills. True. Because I with, plan with, meticulously. Do you travel the squad of nannies? No, no. One man. You. I am all the nanny my babies need. So it's just you and the babies and Me your and man, the babies. and, and then man. you guys are based somewhere, and then he will fly out to certain places, yes. but you guys are based I will, somewhere. I will say, we will only follow you at this place, because you, you also want a bit of stability. I moved around a lot as a kid, and it didn't really phase me much, but I want my kids to feel some type of stability, mm. and that's what I'm there for. I'm trying to root them and just find you know routine, but without too much routine. But you do realize that with the trajectory of what's happening with both of you guys, mm -hmm. because I know it's that you also, yeah, because you did an acting course in LA. Yes, Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, Which yes. then puts you in the center mm -hmm. of acting in LA, mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, you're also going to get scooped up and you're going to be doing things there. Pretty soon, yeah. Yeah, and now he's also like, oh, sooner or later, mm -hmm. you're going to have to accept your... Having to have a nanny that a travels squad. with us. Just yes, and I think when that happens, it will happen. But for now, let me be the mother I want to be for my kids. Okay, mm. all right. So who's your husband working with next? Get him for an interview, another one, I'll <laughs> tell you. <laughs> he, I, you. I tried so hard and I was like, don't worry, I'm gonna ask I your wife. pull it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's Asha. Really? Yes, he I said it himself. Know. Really? <gasps> Anneli, tell me more. Why are you acting like you're not the bouncing ball <laughs> there in the main bedroom, that he's the one that's asking you, baby, should I do this, baby, should I do that? I saw you put up a picture with him and Major Laser. What? When? Later in, Java girl. All right, listen, I want to talk about your fashion line, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the new one that's coming out, uh, your maternity line. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you want, if you'll ever do something that's not maternity-wise, just for you, mm -hmm. your own mm -hmm. fashion line. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to talk about this movie that you're in, where it's like a Colin Chowke something there. Listen, it's all happening after the break. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Talk. For the last time, we're with Anthem Bali. So this coming November promises the release of the biopic of Colin Chawuga in the movies, State Enemy Number One. The movie centers on the life of the former MK veteran, who was also a cash and transit robber, and at one point, the most wanted man in South Africa. How are you linked to this movie? Now, Colin had a girlfriend who he loved with everything he had, the one person he truly, truly trusted. And she almost just broke that empire apart. And I'm sure a lot of people who know the story want to see how we portray it. It was so exciting playing that, knowing it's, you know, we have such interesting stories in we South do. Africa. And do you know what I love is the fact that now we have a pew pew. You movie. know what I mean? It's action, yeah, it's, it's just, punchy. I want, I, I want cars rolling, I want things exploding. I, 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 I want on the run. Let's open up this industry. Yeah, mm -hmm. and is, did you, the, the movie is that, we can look that forward to that. Action, um, action, mm -hmm. and um, action. And <laughs> a bit of love story, obviously, love because story. it's Colin. Yes, 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 but there's a lot of action. And I heard Suffocate is in it. Is he, he playing plays Colin? It, um, do. He plays Colin. And he's intense of in that character. Is. I enjoy him. So, I mean, I, I would watch him and I'd go, oh, sorry, we're performing. He's that, that good. He's amazing. When were you shooting this? We shot this in Jan. All of Jan? All of Jan. Are you, are you, are you're very secretive, clearly, because we, yes. we saw nothing. I know. But when I, the team told me about this movie, I was like, what? We, we shot in Jan, just, and then I started Broken Vows in February. All right. Uh, I'm not one that likes to post, hey, look, what, no. Doing this, I'm, doing that. I'm here to work, it's my job. It's not about what everyone around says but what they think of what I portray. 
I cannot wait to see that movie. Me too. I can. I hope so it makes excited. millions. Me too. Me no, too. We'll, we'll, we'll get Me behind too. it. We'll, Me too. We will get. Yes. You guys will be back here as a cast. We'll yes. definitely get behind yes. it. When are you launching this new maternity line of yours? Because I know the first one did so well. It was it sold so well. out within a week. I, I underestimate myself when I anele. I think it's it's wrong, but I don't think too much yeah. of myself. My mom always says, "Ah, you're too humble." It's not being too humble. I just. I don't want to assume what people think of me. Uh -huh. And so when I made the first range, I understocked. And when it sold out, I thought, oh my gosh, really? This happened? What now? What now? And I was in New York. <laughs> so you couldn't I even... could do nothing about it but leave the sold out. But what that said to me is when something sells out, leave it. So there's not 20 of us that bump into each other and we're wearing, wearing the same, the same thing. thing. I think that was also the beauty of it is that mm -hmm. like, it, 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 everything kind of looked very, yes, it's ready to wear, but it also felt like it was bespoke, like it was yes. made for me, you know, it's yes. mine and all yes. of that. Yes. And I also like what you said about, you know, your first pregnancy taught you everything, right? So the second one, that's when you were ready because you could have done a line in the first pregnancy. I could have. But I you were just have. like, uh-uh, let, me, let me use so this important. as a learning yes. step, yes. right? I think timing is so important. And we often get so excited and divulge things without sitting back and thinking what my plan of action and success is. Okay. Um, we often compete with each other in our industry, but forget that, no, you don't know that person's plan. So you can't really be in competition with an unknown plan. Okay, I hear yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Simply Entle Pregos. S.E. Pregos. S.E. Pregos. Yeah. And apparently if you, you, found it, you wanted to call it Pregos Royale. No, no, no. So Preggy Royale. Preggy Royale, that's what. Preggy Royale was the launch, the, the theme of the launch mm. last year, mm. last year. Mm. And the reason I called it Preggy Royale is when you're pregnant, you don't really feel like much no. you constantly need to be reminded but how beautiful everyone how else hot. tells you oh you're glowing you're do you so know what i mean like, you really? just don't see it your hormones play with I'm you just like, I'm, just, I'm just trying to breathe out here can i breathe <laughs> can i walk you can i stand up my bladder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you don't want to share bed with anyone Nothing. you're like please go sleep somewhere else Nothing. yeah and so i felt preggy royale was so perfect in, in alignment with pr what pregnancy really is. You are royal, you are breeding life within you, you are working constantly, even when you're sitting, you're royalty. No oh. other being can do what a female being can do. So you're royal, Preggy Royal. Would you ever write a book on motherhood? Because I've watched a lot of your interviews mm. and you know, Besides what I didn't tell you about Victoria Beckham, you and her, that you know how you guys are so aligned is that you, you both make motherhood look very not easy, but you've got it right. It's it, there's you're not panicked, you you and you know that there's mistakes mm. that you're gonna make, but you're not dwelling in them. Mm. You know, everyone looks good, everyone's walking, you just mm. you kind of make it look mm. sexy, man. Mm. So, are you thinking along those lines of writing a mommy book? Yes. No. No, not, not right now. I haven't thought of it in the near future. But maybe when I'm 40 and I think I know it all <laughs> and I have learnt it all, I um, I <laughs> <laughs> then I'll write a book. I feel to write a book, you need to have as much knowledge in, as you possibly can. And right now, when it comes to the parenting sphere, I'm a nobody. I'm learning as I go. Uh -huh. I might make it look easy, but that's because of the personality I have. I'm just calm within myself. And when I am panicking, you almost see flinch of the eyebrow yeah. and that's as much short as you're going to get. I short circuit <laughs> and I come back. <laughs> Would you ever write a book, Nje, just on yes. your life? Yes. Okay. I think I have many interesting stories to tell. Okay. It might not seem like it, but I've got lots of interesting stories to tell. Would you ever direct? I love directing. Mm. So um, I've studied directing as well while I was in South Africa. And it's something I'm very interested in. I've directed some of Nutty's Black Music Coffee's videos. videos. Uh, I've directed some of my own stuff. And it's something I'm very interested in doing professionally. I think I just need to find my confidence. And that's only going to happen once I start. So I need to start. Mm. Mm. And I, we touched on it, mm -hmm. but I want to go back. International plans. Mm -hmm. What are your international plans? Because we know your husband's ones. 
Um, internationally. Do you have an agent overseas? I have an agent. Ah. That's as far. I got the agent just before I was about to leave. And I thought, should I stay? Should I go? But I missed home so much. I came back. Mm. Um, it's there. It's, it's not going anywhere. And... Um, do the Americans like your English? Because I know they're very particular about English. I had to learn an American accent. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you like how to talk like a Kardashian and I had stuff? To talk, I had to talk like an American. I had to talk like a Kardashian. Because Americans love Americans. So if they want a South African girl, they would ask for a South African girl. So I was South African. But if needed, I would switch it. Like if I'd say, could I have some... Milk. Yeah. No, milk doesn't work. It doesn't have an accent. But you know what I mean. Yes. And they can't. It's hear. not water. Can I have water? Watermelon? Watermelon. It's water. Like, what are you saying? Yeah. Water. Okay. And so I was forced to learn the accent. Apart from school, I was forced to learn the accent. Mm. All right. And I'm appreciating it. I'm looking forward to seeing what you put together on the other side. <laughs> on, on the other side. On the other side. So soon, it's your soon. line is out. If people want it, I know you said you're never ever gonna have a shop. No, no, like, no. Uh, I don't like, want to store. Uh, I feel the rest of the world is moving on to, you know. Online. Online. Yeah. And that's exactly what I'm doing. It, it makes sense in terms of the business. But also. And, and its profitability as well. And also you can monitor it from anywhere. And you can you, monitor. You have to be at your shop for it to be profitable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I will, however, be stocking items of clothing in selected stores. We have stores in Rosebank and Santon right now. Uh -huh. But we will communicate via social media and any other platform. Platforms. Till then, <laughs> listen, thank you for giving us no, your time you. and sharing all of the plans with us. So, who's your husband working with next? Um, me. Whatever. <laughs> By the way, your ring has been blinding me. Like, Sorry. Listen, every time I'm like, every time I'm like, cling, cling, cling. Better? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just hating. I'm just hating. What a treat. It's been having Bali in studio today. Thank you so much to you at home for always being part of the conversation across all our social platforms. See you next time right here on SABC3 where the stage is yours.